Hello there guys and welcome to episode 2 of the guide to amazing X-Plane 11 scenery. In this episode we are going to be taking a look in addition to two freeware and two payware airports at the HD Mesh scenery version 4 for X-Plane 11. The HD Mesh scenery version 4 provides for a more enjoyable visual experience in X-Plane 11 by providing more accurate mountains, slopes, elevations, roads and resolution. We are currently looking at the area surrounding Seattle International Airport with the HD Mesh scenery installed. The nice thing about this add-on is that it's completely free of charge. The only caveat is that if you're having FPS issues or you have a low-end machine, you will probably suffer even lower FPS with this mesh installed. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the HD Mesh Scenery version 4 for X-Plane 11 and how to verify your installation. So without further ado, let's get to it. The HD Mesh Scenery version 4 for X-Plane 11 is developed and is available free of charge at the AlpilotX.net website. Link to the website will be provided in the description section. The first thing we want to do is we want to prepare the installation folders. To do this, we're going to go to the installation link here, number six. All right. So the first thing we want to do, we want to create a folder called triple Z underscore HD underscore global underscore scenery four. Now we have to make sure that there are no quotes and that the name looks exactly as it appears here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the file name and we're going to head over here, right click new folder we're going to paste the name and now we have uh, the exact folder name that we need inside that folder we're going to create the earth nav data and it, ha it it is case sensitive so make sure that you copy it exactly as it's shown here on the website earth nav data the earth the e in earth is in capital and the n in nav and d in data is small letter we're going to copy that and we're going to head back over to the folder that we just created and we're going to paste it in there. Uh, we're going to say new folder and we're going to paste the name. We are now ready to move the HD global scenery folder into the explain 11 custom scenery folder. To do this, we right click, cut the file and then move to our explain 11 installation custom scenery right click and paste. Now, as you can see, the file has been placed at the very bottom, but when we run explain, the custom scenery.ini will place this entry at the very top. And this is the default behavior when installing new scenery. Right now, the scenery pack does not have this entry. So we need to start explain 11 in order for this um, scenery entry to be entered into the scenery packs.ini. Explain has started successfully and now we can take a look at the scenerypacks.ini file. Okay, so here's the scenerypacks.ini file and as you can see now the scenerypacks custom scenery ZZZ HD global scenery 4 is now placed at the very top of the scenery uh, packs ini. What you need to do is you need to cut this entry and you need to move it all the way to the bottom of the scenerypacks.ini and the reason why we do this is because the HD mesh scenery is a base mesh so anything that comes below it will not actually show because explain 11 considers this to be the base mesh um, so if I place it for example here all of the items so if I place the file here so if I place the HD global scenery in this position all of the items below it will not show so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place it at the very bottom right here and we're going to save the file. Now we need to do one more thing. We need to restart explain again for this to take effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have the HD mesh folders in the right place and the scenery packs.ini has been properly configured, we can start installing some of the DSF files into the EarthNav data folder. I've downloaded a few files here so that I can show you how to do the installation. 
and uh, we're going to take this one here for example we're going to right click and we're going to choose extract files and what we'll do now is we will navigate to uh, the xplane 11 installation to custom scenery scroll down to our hd mesh folder which is this one here earth nav data and we're going to say OK. And this is pretty much it. This concludes the installation. So let's head back over to X-Plane 11, Custom Scenery, and we're going to go all the way down to our uh, created folder, which is the HD Global Scenery 4, and EarthNav Data. And now, as you can see, we have the um, first folder containing the DSF files for that particular tile. Now that the installation is completed, we need to verify that the installation is correct and that everything is working in perfect order. To do this, load the airport or load any area where you have installed um, the HD scenery mesh. Then we need to go to um, our root xplane 11 installation. We need to go to the log.txt file. Open the file and scroll all the way down to this area here right here okay so we're gonna we're, what we're looking for here is the HD mesh and as you can see there is an entry here for example that has a load time and it says that this DSF load time is for file custom scenery triple Z HD global scenery for earth map data and it has the coordinates there so this is confirmation that indeed the um, area or the tile uh, for this HD scenery has been loaded successfully into Xplane 11. And this is your verification that everything is working according to design intent. The time has now come for us to take a look at two freeware and two payware airports that I personally recommend for Xplane 11. The first freeware scenery in our list today is that of London City Airport and the Canary Wharf area in the United Kingdom. As you can see, this is a beautiful rendition of the Canary Wharf area as we approach the dome here and London City Airport right ahead of us. This scenery is comprised of two elements, the Canary Wharf area and London City Airport. Of course, links to both will be provided to you in the description section of the video. A quick note on the London City Airport scenery. Um, the scenery itself is actually very FPS friendly, but the area surrounding London City Airport is quite intensive, so you might need to tweak your settings a bit for optimal experience. The second airport in our freeware list today is Chambéry Airport in France, or Lima Foxtrot Lima Bravo. Chambéry Airport scenery for X-Plane 11 was developed by TDG, and TDG is known for creating some very stunning scenery for X-Plane 11, and it is always free of charge. Chambéry Airport is beautifully situated around the French Alps. It happens to be one of my most favorite airports for testing general aviation aircraft. The link to it, again, is provided in the description section of the video. We're going to begin our list of payware airports today from Eastern Europe and specifically from Echo Echo Tango November or Tallinn Airport in Estonia. This beautiful rendition of the airport was developed by Dzurowski Design and, and Dzurowski Design is very well known for creating very stunning scenery for X-Plane 11. This airport of course is payware. It is available on the X-Plane org and link to it will be provided in the description section of the video. The second airport in our payware list today is Dublin Airport or Echo India Delta Whiskey. This beautiful rendition of Dublin Airport was developed by Aerosoft and it is available immediately at the org for immediate purchase. Well guys, this brings us to the conclusion of our video today. I hope that this was an insightful and useful video. I hope that you've enjoyed the list of airports I compiled for you in this episode. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.